Hey folks, the second in my two ranty videos today. for today. Not really anything serious. Um, I try not to make the same video over and over again, but I do want to try and get the word out on some uh, very basic things about the guitar industry and um, the way it is and what, how, what it's become. Um, I've had a couple of people email me lately to say, uh, you know, discussing a guitar that I have for sale to say, um, I can't find any information about that particular guitar that you're selling. And that's quite a number of them. Case in point, here's a clamor. Nobody's heard of a clamor. They're well known in Australia. They're not well known in the US. They're not well known in Britain. So it's normal, I think, discerning people. Uh, I'd rather have them ask questions ahead of time than after the fact. So I don't mind answering questions. So I answer them back. Yes, it's not distributed in the US. There is no distributorship in the US it's uh, made for the Australian market. I just happened to get one because I was curious about the maker uh, because it is European made. Um, and I can tell you that the materials are very good. Uh, it's made with a uh, uh, beautiful flame maple back and sides. Uh, it's, it seems to be all European wood, including the cedar. Uh, these are made in uh, Eastern Europe and they are um, you know, uh, consistent with the guitar, other guitars that I've had for, made in that area. Or you'll say something like, um, yes, uh, that ukulele is not available on the, in the US market. I had so many made to, according to my specs and I put my, my name on them. Um, but I can sure, assure you that they, from the perspective of a luthier, that they are well made, they have good parts, good rosewood board, the frets are nice and even. I've done a setup on it. I always uh, replace the uh, set bone and saddle, the nut and saddle, so that they're bone, aquila strings. You know, given the information to calm their fears that I haven't heard of something, therefore it can't be good. Uh, and you know, some people, um, you know, when they hear that you uh, are, are capable of talking about uh, these things um, and citing. Um, particular woods or parts or, or parts of the world that make stuff like this or you seem to have some inf insider information that calms their fears and then they'll either uh, decide to order the guitar or not uh, or come and look at it um, for the people who are inquiring locally and you get and then you get those other people that can't be persuaded that something outside of their basic um, uh, experience uh, can't possibly be uh, any good and there's really not a lot you can do for those people. You, you can try to persuade them, look, you know, 10 years ago, brands like Bedell and Breedlove and uh, Blue Ridge and, well, let's say 20 years ago, they were unknown and people were questioning those, but they've slowly uh, developed a reputation. They're well made, uh, uh, good parts. Uh, they don't have the um, financial clout or the marketing clout that a big company like Guild or Fender uh, or Martin has uh, but they're excellently made instruments um, uh, uh, with good parts and materials good joinery uh, some of them have excellent uh, customer service ethics um, you know uh, companies like Godan who do the seagulls and the art and luthery uh, yeah they're not as big as Taylor they're not as well as well known as Martin but I think they're fairly established and people are still sort of finding out about them although most people have heard of them by now well, these newer companies are just basically doing the same thing. Some of them will survive, some of them won't. Some of them will morph into other companies. Uh, chances are you'll never hear of their logo because, um, you know, as we've said on so many of these videos, uh, a lot of these guitars tend to be made, ukuleles tend to be made in the same 10, 10, 12, 15 factories around Asia. And the brand names are interchangeable. Um, you know, a lot of these brands, uh, I happen to know that Clemmer actually makes this guitar uh, or has this guitar made um, because I've watched a video about their production. But there are a lot of guitars with unknown brands that are basically just distributors. They're buying uh, uh, so many hundreds or thousands of guitars, having them made for them, for them according to specs or buying, uh, um, you know, somebody's uh, um, excess. You know, often people buy like... Um, you know, what's left over from, from a, a, a big brand order. Like I've seen uh, smaller or no brand instruments that are identical to bigger brand. And what they did is they just bought off 
uh, you know, a couple of hundred of extra uh, models left over from some production run and slap their, their uh, label or their logo on it. I've seen that so many times. So that's why I don't put a whole lot of stock into uh, what's on the uh, headstock uh, or on the inside label. I really examine these guitars um, physically. I'm more interested in how they're made. And you get some patterns. Yes, there are some makers that uh, uh, tend to uh, not be as good at specking woods or uh, uh, materials or their parts are cheap or they cut corners and costs in a way that can't be uh, upgraded or, or set up or modded by the end user. Most of the times they can. But occasionally, you know, I've, I've run into runs of guitars with uh, warp necks and issues that you can't remedy. But most of the time, it's stuff like, oh, I can change the tuners, I can upgrade to a bone nut and saddle, um, I can upgrade the, the bridge pins, or it needs fret work, I need to sort out uh, the action and the string heights and the, and the fret leveling and all that sort of stuff, and I can make a good guitar, even though I've never heard of the um, brand on the headstock. Um, you know, that's just my experience and, you know, you can, you can sort of bring some people around to it uh, and, then, and then there are other people that, that think that anything that's a, a copy or um, uh, an off-brand, let's say, uh, can't possibly be as good or is not worth uh, any value compared to the big brands. Um, you know, the, the guitar industry in some ways uh, mirrors the electronics industry, and I realize people want a Samsung, they want an Apple uh, iPhone, they want uh, the brand name stuff. That doesn't mean there aren't good electronic companies putting out, you know, reasonably uh, uh, good standard backup uh, products that are, you know, half the cost. And then there are, of course, some that are putting out awful uh, products, electronics that um, you try a couple of different models out and then you just basically uh, realize that um, the, the production values uh, are just not there. So in, in many ways the guitar company is the same and you see me doing videos on these lesser known or unbranded instruments and I, a lot of times I do critique them, I do tell you the things I have to do with them, I do list or try to make you aware of Ish, potential issues that I see uh, um, repeated as I set up the instruments. A lot of these instruments now I'm in my second, third round of. So when I talk about you know brands like um, K-Pok and Glary and and um, Honer, uh, well Honer's pretty well known. Um, IYV, uh, Firefly, that kind of stuff. Most of them now I've bought more than one. I'm I'm into a second or a third model. I've had a bit, a bit of experience with the company. Uh, I can spot trends, I can see issues, and I try to report that diligently. But most of the time, you know, it really does go by uh, model to model, uh, and um, just being able to do some setup and being able to make a good guitar out of something um, that you might have overlooked because you thought it was uh, a lesser product because of the price or because of uh, uh, where it sits in the market. So, um, yeah. I just I know this is sort of repeat territory and I, I don't mean to do that um, however uh, there's a lot to learn about there are lots of brands out there I don't know about uh, I'm finding out about every day I'm always doing research on new stuff that I didn't had no clue about no clue it existed so it's been around a long time and I'm wondering how that got through my net um, but it just happens to be the case uh, I don't think there's any room in this industry to say I know everything if I haven't heard of it or if I have no experience with it then probably it's not worth bothering I don't I, I really think that's a, a sort of substandard approach to anything in life uh, so I'm, I'm a little I get a little tired of, of facing that uh, reaction uh, in this particular business um, there are lots of great brands unknown brands up and coming brands interesting models interesting new ideas of making stuff, interesting material options, uh, synthetic materials, replacement woods, all kinds of stuff going on all the time. Some of it is successful, some of it turns out to be unsuccessful and dies uh, uh, you know, a, a silent death somewhere on eBay and, then no, they, and they no longer get made. So anyway, just keep an open mind is basically what I'm saying and um, try guitars out. Don't write things off. See you next time.